Today on Running to Him. Man's life is found in the blood. Today's reading from the reading plan is Genesis chapter 9, and we will concentrate on verses 3 through 7. Genesis 9 through through 7 says, Every moving thing that is alive shall be food for you. I give all to you, as I gave the green plant. Only you shall not eat the flesh with its life, that is, its blood. Surely I will require your lifeblood. From every beast I will require it. And from every man, every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by his blood you shall be said. For the image of God he made man. As for you, be fruitful and multiply. Populate the earth abundantly and multiply in it. Now, chapter 9 has two distinct parts. The first part, verses 1 through 20, records God's conversation with Noah. The second part records Ham's sin and Canaan's curse, verses 21 through 29. I'd like to touch on both parts today. There can be a strong case made for the idea that mankind was a vegetarian or vegan before the flood. That does not mean that everyone today needs to become a vegan, but it wasn't until after the flood that animals showed the fear of man, Genesis 9-2, and that God said that mankind could eat animal meat. The flood changed creation in many ways, and now God allows humanity to be carnivores, meat eaters. He also makes a statement concerning where life resides in animals and humans. In verse 4, God tells Noah that the life is in the blood, This statement seems rather straightforward and almost too simplistic to be true. But if we approach the statement scientifically, we'll find that, at its very core, blood carries out the necessities of life to the cells, oxygen and food, and carries waste by the cells, carbon dioxide, to the lungs. Therefore, we say that the life of a human is in the blood. The blood is what allows a human to live. Without blood, a human or an animal will die. Now, there's a fascinating video from Moody Institute of Silence on the blood entitled River of Life, and the YouTube link is either listed below or listed on what you're reading. The reference that Dr. Moon quotes is from The Last Illness and Death of Washington for the Virginia Medical Monthly, 53, 1926-27, pages 629-42. through Even though this movie is over 60 years old, it speaks to us today about the miracle of life and the complexity of creation. Now, the second thing I'd like to discuss is Ham's sin, found in verses 20 through 29. In these verses, we find that Noah became drunk. Ham saw, or did something, his brothers responded, and Noah cursed Canaan, Ham's son. Well, Ham's sin had to do with his seeing Noah in some sort of nakedness. The word used here generally means in some form of sexual behavior. Most believe that Noah was nude and Ham saw his father sexually aroused. Whether or not this caused Ham to have a homosexual experience with his father can only be conjecture. But whatever happened, it was egregious enough for Noah to pronounce a curse. Ham's brother treated Noah's nakedness with modesty by walking backward and covering Noah with a cover. So herein lies two principles. First principle is, getting drunk allows a person to place himself in a compromising position. Secondly, someone can take advantage of you when you are in that drunken state. Both people sin. By becoming drunk, you lose control of your thoughts. And, as people are evil, they can take advantage of that situation. So, to prevent that from happening, don't get drunk, and don't be around people whose nature it is to take advantage of others. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.